My name is Tom Levy. I went from Lower Stoff, most easterly point on Great Britain's mainland, to Ardamach on Lighthouse Point, uh, which is the most westerly point on uh, mainland Great Britain. Over winter, I've been training. I've been slowly upping my workload on the bike. I race a lot and ride a lot on Zwift, and I've been cycling a lot or in the garage on the turbo. Most easterly point in Great Britain, mainland. Well, I've done triathlons for years and years and years, but I've never done anything which is longer than, say, like 13 hours long, which is how long it took me to do my Ironman. So I want to do something which is ultra in distance and pushes me to my limit. Twelfth Man is obviously all about um, helping each other and talking to each other and having support. And uh, Matt's, you know, started with me and given me a toe for nearly 70k. So, I, you know, it's super useful, super helpful. And I've been gibbering away to him as well. So it's yeah, all, kept, kept me just talking. kept me distracted. Now, now I've just got my own thoughts, but hopefully it will be a be nice and calm on the bike. It's going to have some challenges over the next three days. Part of that is going to be a sort of mental game and sitting with your thoughts for a long time on the bike by yourself is going to be going to be quite challenging. Uh, I'm in Kings Lynn. I don't ever want to cycle through Kings Lynn again. I've just had a crash. I haven't told you about that yet. Uh, some bloke just swerved in front of me and slammed his brakes on, so I went into the back of him, which was unpleasant. But no, I didn't come off. Nothing major. Still, just irritating though. I mean, like this is the, this is the first major stop, so I've got to get used to it. It's nice to have good weather, really nice to have good weather. Okay, sun cream going on. Love sun cream. Oh shit. Oh, we're not doing well here, are we? I feel like there's people out there who would be much more uh, slick at this than me. Now, super flat, head down, crack through, be super unaero with everything in my pockets. That's fine. Uh, okay, let's do this. Oh, the way I've planned it is I looked at a map, created the route in one massive 600 mile long uh, route, split it down into like 11 bits, and then I've gone along on Google uh, Street View and just kind of clicked constantly through 600 miles on Google Street View. The route is, it should be pretty safe. Um, there's not too much that's ever on dual carriageway and if the, it is on dual carriageway it's like kind of disused because it's right next to a motorway so most people are on that. It's using, I wouldn't say kind of like ultra quiet country roads but it's using quieter roads. I'm not going on any real main main roads. The A17 is so dangerous, just so dangerous. I've definitely burnt a couple of matches on there because I was just like, I just want to get off of it. It would have probably been about 570 miles, 575 miles. But the way I've planned it is it's now 600 miles. So I've added a little bit of distance on to try and make it a bit safer. Last maybe 15K I've done, I've started to feel better. But from about 65K to 90 of that yeah. last segment, I just was awful. Really? Yeah, I just stomach felt crap. You know, stomach and head started to go when yeah. the stomach when the stomach goes, the head goes. For this leg, I'm going to be going slower. Even if you even if you do stop at the end of this leg, yeah, and have a couple hours sleep, you can still get a head start tomorrow with an early start. So yeah, you're, you're doing great for time. I'm definitely all asleep. Yeah. Oh. This is also like real challenge to do it on your own. Oh, feeling good. Come on, Tom, you can do this. My main aim for this is to do a minimum of 200 miles a day and get to the end uh, within three days. I think that's a fair shout. I'm not an ultra marathon or ultra like long distance cyclist by nature. This is all new to me. I don't know how my body's going to really react. I'm fit, but I am just an average bloke. You know, I'm not like some professional. I don't get paid for this, I don't do anything like this. So if I can do it in three days, I'm going to be super happy. If I can do it in less than that, I, I'll be over the moon. Physically preparing for the challenge, that's what I've been doing. 
I'm sure there's people out there who would go, oh, Tom, you should have at least gone up a 200 mile ride. You should have at least got this in or that in. But I've also had all my other life to kind of work around. This is always meant to be fun. So I don't want to be suddenly putting the huge amounts of pressure on myself. I want to be able to see my other half. I want to be able to, you know, wander up the beach for a walk. I want to enjoy a beer in the evening. And that's how I've been training. As long as I'm constant, I'm getting better. Had like a few hours sleep. And Sam made this massive great suggestion of stopping off at this service station where they had showers and it makes oh that just is like makes you feel human again one foot in front of the other as it were pedal stroke by pedal stroke we'll get there yeah, it's gonna be fun i say fun it's gonna be something <laughs> i think lots and lots of climbing today like loads uh, it's going to be a much longer day in the saddle. Yesterday, I think cycling time-wise, I did like probably like less than 12 hours, wasn't oh, it? Wow. Like only about 11 and a half hours of cycling to do 200 miles, which I'm just going to say I'm impressed with myself over that one. But today's probably going to be like 16, 17 hours. I've just got to take it real slow. I'm really looking forward to hills. Yeah, and these are a bit achy and stuff. Um, Met a nice old boy called Dave. Nice. Yeah, I cycled next to him just to have some fun. Yeah. yeah, this is going to be the one that is long. I think this is 1,300 metres of climbing. The last one was only like 600 maybe. Right. Uh, we'll see you in about oh. 10, 15k, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I am also raising money for a local organisation called the 12th Man Group. They deliver mental health first aid training to, to local businesses, places where men feel relaxed to open up. So places like tattoo parlours, bars, maybe local sports teams, things like that. Because obviously suicide is a massive, massive killer in this country for men and, and young people. So they're trying to do something about it. And I really like what they stand for. And also they have a cycling group, which is always nice as well. You're pretty much as high as it gets. You've got, yeah. you basically go down this valley and up the other side, so you've got another big climb. Mental health is something I've always cared about. I think it's a really important subject, certainly nowadays, with everything that's happened oh, with COVID over the last 18 oh, months lady. or just over a year. Some people have thrived, but a lot of people oh, sitting inside crikey. and being on their own is, is really, it's really hurt them a lot mentally. Definitely climbing. You know when I said, I'm looking forward to the hills? I am. Um, not looking forward to more hills. I'm feeling shit and I've realised I forgot to eat. So stupid. So focused on how crap I felt. I know people who have suffered with their mental health and people close to me, like very close to me, have suffered and it's horrible to see it. I don't want that to happen to anybody else. I think it's, um, I want people to... Very tired. I want people to help each other and look after each other and, and I think the 12th Man Group really uh, provide a, a good base for that. Problem talked about is a problem half and um, it, it does it does work like having someone to talk to and, and having people there who can listen is, is crucial and that's that's what they're helping with uh, i never want to leave what more do i need i have a servant you call me that you then <laughs> and fresh water i don't need anything else sam is definitely not a servant sam is um my lifeline to humanity and being able to move all the drugs this would probably go a lot quicker if I was on certain drugs the trick is the seasoning <laughs> oh, oh. I've struggled about five six years ago it was a tough time and, and I had to have time off work. I had to kind of sit down and really reevaluate what I was doing and 
working shift patterns and, and late nights, early mornings, what was happening in my life at the time, it, it was pretty, uh, pretty bad and, and it really built up on my um, side of things and then kind of all came flooding out at once and Hello. Uh, you know, I just broke down from it. And it's really unpleasant. To be that scared in your own head is pretty, pretty hard. It's horrible. It's really horrible. I still think there's this notion of being a man's man, being a provider, being um, hardy, being able to take everything from the chin, being able to laugh things off. Certainly with things like social media, you see everybody else's life all looks peachy and looks brilliant. That society pressure is just crazy. Like, I'm never going to be the richest person in the world, but I've got a few bikes, a loving partner and a roof over my head. Yeah, I think I'm pretty, pretty lucky in all, all aspects of it. I still didn't sleep very well. The heat is starting to affect me a bit. Yeah, I think I'm just going to... Uh, maybe sit out the middle of the day potentially and normally in the mornings I feel all right I normally can kind of do okay so I'm hoping that I'll be all right and that I can kind of crack on with things I haven't had any breakfast yet so I'm just gonna sling I don't know what I'm gonna sling down my throat actually keep hydrating yeah yep oh come on Whenever there's a low, you'll get a high afterwards. So you've always got to have faith that you will feel okay. This time yesterday morning, I didn't even think I was going to complete it. Day two, I'd really suffered with, um, with the heat in Yorkshire. And I felt awful. And I woke up yesterday morning having like supposedly had a night's sleep and I just couldn't like keep a solid temperature. And Going into Glasgow and through Glasgow, I felt awful. Just every part of me felt awful. Then I had some soup, had a bit of a kit, and I just got going. You know, got going. I felt so much better. Don't like how busy the road is, but otherwise. Let's go up a hill. I am literally just kind of like, if I'm holding 20k an hour, like, that's impressive. Yeah, well, yeah. more like 70. To be fair, it smashed that really quick. I think just the, it was just a downhill though. To the end of this stage, yeah. when I get to the end of the stage. Yeah. Baby wipe shower. Hot food. Hot food, change into non-cycling clothes. And sleep for two hours in the car sleep in there and car while we drive around. Yeah. And then change when I get there and see what happens. Like, just give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, if I get 10K in and I'm like, this is shit, then I literally just get back in the car and fall asleep again.
I can't. I want it done. I want it done now. It'll be alright. Cycled in the dark before. Just don't know the roads. 79 kilometers left. Even though it's pretty warm, I'm still gonna put all the layers on. I can always strip them off quickly. I definitely think I'm getting a bit tired because I'm starting to shake. Stage 10 was all right, just a bit long and boring. The last stage, stage 11, I just like, yeah, we just kind of put our heads down and cracked on, went through the night. Like when I knew that was an option to get like a 69 hour uh, point, I was like, oh, I can only, I can only move now. I can only go fast. Like I just got to keep working, keep working, keep working. Um, I won't lie, like, got saddle sores and everything now so like sitting in the saddle for the last 30 kilometers wasn't pleasant and I kind of basically didn't sit in the saddle so I've been standing most of the time um, I thought my bike position before this was really good this doing 600 miles shows up all the tiny flaws in your bike position okay we'll find some kind of lay by hopefully within the next couple of K Get just do like now. an hour yeah, and because then my light will be charged there'll be more sunlight and then you don't have to waste all your petrol and hopefully I'll feel a bit more rested because yeah. I am I think we're all flagging at the minute it is 20 past 2 get going before half at half past 3 so we're gonna have some sleep here yeah yeah so. just drop that come on come on, come on. I just, yeah, I felt good, but um, mentally, I think, uh, yeah, there were points like with 6k to go or something, 5k to go, my gears jammed as I was kind of dropping because I was going up, I don't know, whatever it was, like 10% gradient, and obviously my legs were wrecked at that point, so I was trying to get into my lowest, easiest gear, um, and, uh, and it all just went horrendous I just went sideways couldn't unclip and smashed my knee on the floor went over and honestly I don't think I've ever screamed with so much anger just constantly luckily none of you guys were around like no one was around apart from some sheep and a few deer but I was just I was so angry at everything I wanted to smash everything up the saddle had gone wonky on the bike I didn't, I haven't, didn't even stop to fix that. Like, I had, the front brake suddenly was rubbing really badly, so I loosened, had to loosen off the front brake just completely. Um, so that was horrible with 6K to go, knowing that you're so close and you just have to, uh, you just have to, like, deal with it, you know, just to get on with it. I thought I'd end up starting the last leg after the third day, um, doing the last 79 kilometers and finishing it in like say three days and six hours. So to finish it eight and a half hours ahead of that, then yeah. That's 69 good. hours I'm happy with it. and 28 minutes. Yes! There were lows, there were highs. I finished and right now like you've you know there's footage of me just shouting and screaming with joy but now I just feel relieved I feel so relieved to have done it <laughs>